Hey, I'm Vic, VicStolen23. I make gaming videos on YouTube. I'm 19, I've been doing this for four or five years now. It's my full-time job right now and it's great fun. Okay, so um, we were down in Insomnia, as you know, a few weeks back and uh, we were following around seeing what you do and experiencing talking to some fans. We saw some of your fans and things like that. Um, so how was the event for you overall? What was the experience like? The event was crazy. It's bigger than anything that I've ever done before in terms of events. I've been to events for the past three, four years and each time I go to an event, my audience has grown a little bit bigger and there's, you know, a few more people recognizing who I am and recently I've become much more familiar with showing my face in my videos and actually putting my personality across, getting involved in kind of video logs, going out on trips and filming myself, that kind of thing. And we'd also advertise this event to our fan base, giving them a place to go and pick up tickets to come and see us at the event. So it was absolutely crazy, an amazing experience meeting so many fans, but it was crazily busy. It was nonstop each and every day. Very, very tiring to do. That's the one, yeah. You couldn't do it every weekend. Nope. <laughs> so, um, what is it like actually meeting your fans in real life and taking photos with them and all the things that you're doing? What's it like? Yeah, it's a great experience actually meeting the people who watch our videos in real life. In some senses, they know us better than, you know, people we interact with on a daily basis in life just because they'll sit and watch our videos every single day without fail and it's just it's a crazy thing to see what is essentially just a number on a screen or just a username and a display picture leaving something in text to go from that difference of someone you know leaving something that's very kind of informal to actually you're talking to this person they're actually you know it's in a way it's, it's weird to think but you don't see them as kind of a person when it's literally just one statement that they've left that's what you see of them when you're actually talking to them in a normal conversation you just you learn so much more about kind of your audience and how they interact with what you do and it's, it's a great experience. Okay, so, so it's definitely something that you, you like to do and you feel, does it, do, when you come back, do you feel that you know, you're more energized and you wanna keep doing what you're doing? So does it really- does Definitely. It it's a great motivator just mm. to see what again is just essentially numbers turn into real people and, and you see that people actually, it's almost you see more genuinely that they enjoy what it is that you do and that kind of pushes you further with it. Does it always surprise you how many people actually turn up to these events? Do you always think, oh, there'll be a few people, but does it, does it always surprise you just how many people? I mean, obviously, we were at the event and just to see so many people around the booth and the queues so long, that it just, for, for all of us, I think we were taken back a little bit. So do you feel a little bit like that sometimes when you just see... The massive amount of people definitely each event that goes on it's kind of more and more and it's always more than we expect and again it's the whole numbers thing you come back to it you see a big number on a page but that doesn't mean much in real life until you turn up to an event and even what is essentially a small number of people on youtube when you see them in the flesh and they're around you and you know they're creating noise it's like wow this is actually this is actually something real and yeah it's definitely each time it takes us by surprise but it's a good experience so it sort of hits home to you with what you actually do and the effect that actually yeah. has on people. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Um, so, I obviously, there's a lot of people and things around that. Do you, do you still find, like, we find it quite crazy, literally, that you'd come off, like, for instance, the Twitch stage, and immediately there'd be so many people around you, and I think moving around the whole place is very, very difficult without getting crowded by people. How does that, for you, really, is that tiring? That is, that is the one downside of having a larger audience. This is probably the first event where there have physically been more people that want to meet me mm -hmm. than I'm able to meet in return, which is a scary, scary concept. Yeah. I mean, in reality, it's a good thing, but at the same time, that could be really tedious when I was trying to get from one place to another for a meeting, for example, or you know, I had a meet and greet or a signing or I had to get to the booth to help out with something. It was very difficult to kind of be in that situation where you're trying to move from A to B and people are stopping you on the way. And it's so difficult to say like, sorry, I can't take this picture. I can't sign this thing because to them, it's their one chance. It's, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I've watched this person for ages. This is my one chance to get the photo with them, get the signatures. So to be in that position where sometimes you need to say, look, sorry, I'll be here later on. I have to go now is a difficult thing to do but I guess at the same time um, it's you know it's quite a humbling thing yeah. that people yeah. want that time that interaction that's cool that's cool what? so um, it must be quite strange I mean you weren't didn't come from sort of your background where um, you were sort of what we used to fame or we used to a lot of people knowing your things I mean do you find it sometimes a bit weird when you'll go out and just have a meal or you'll go to cinema or whatever and people will immediately recognize who you are and, and stop to talk to you I don't know yeah that's definitely a strange thing something that we're getting more and more used to and in a way we're lucky in the way that it builds up gradually 
on YouTube in that we become more and more used to it. You know, first it will be, you know, once in a year, then it might be, you know, a few times in a month. And it builds up slowly to the point where you do get used to it. It's still, I mean, in a way, it still blows my mind every time, just the fact that I'm out, you know, wherever I am and uh, I've met people. The first time I ever met a fan was actually a really, really weird coincidence. So this is when I barely would show my face on my YouTube channel. I was just kind of a voice talking about what I was up to. I mentioned that I was going uh, skiing in Austria and that I'd be taking a GoPro with me to just record some footage of it. And uh, while I was on this ski trip with all of my school friends in Austria, someone came up behind me, tapped me on the shoulder and asked if I was Vic Style 123. And this is three, four years ago. And my mind was kind of blown at that point because this person hadn't even truly recognized me from my face. Just the fact that I was in Austria and I was skiing with a GoPro. And then it's come on to the point now where it becomes quite a normal thing. And people, you know, when we go out to shopping centers or even different countries, people will come up to us and recognize us. But again, it's just, it's, uh, it's a great thing because we always feel more connected with our audience because of how YouTube is. It's all about our interaction with the people that watch our videos. So they feel kind of very you know, normal around us and we feel kind of quite natural speaking to them because they obviously know a lot about us. And uh, it's, it's more of a personal interaction rather than, you know, they've watched some of our work, kind of some of our filming work. And they know us from that. They know us from, it's not as if our fans know us from playing a character. They know us for playing ourselves, so that's you know really key. So you feel that having a personality on YouTube, and obviously I think that's probably why you started to show your face. You felt that that was more important, you know, to sort of bring that across to you know to, to grow the audience and to make them feel more involved. Definitely, and it's just a more. It makes it more enjoyable to be able to engage directly with the audience. It does take you know some confidence to get on a camera in front of thousands of people, but at the same time, you don't want to be hiding yourself from the. Uh, you know the interaction. Mm, okay. Um, right. I think we're going to move on to we'll move on to the how how it all started a little bit now. Um, so yeah, where did it all kick off? For you what really gave you the passion to go? Do you know what this YouTube thing? I wanna I wanna give this a go. So YouTube for me was just a fun little hobby with friends from school. You'll hear a lot of people who make videos on YouTube. A lot of the time they'll say they were inspired by this YouTuber, that YouTuber. They would watch them and they wanted to kind of imitate that and do it themselves. For me, it's a little different. It was a bunch of my school friends that were just uploading little clips of them playing games and possibly a little bit of arrogance slipping in, thought I could do a little bit better. I could not, I was, I was shocking at playing the games and editing them. But I just wanted to kind of get involved in that with my school friends. We'd all be uploading little clips of just what we were doing in the game, some of our cool moments, sharing them with each other, using YouTube as a platform for this, never really looking beyond each other but it just turned out that there were people searching for gaming videos on YouTube at this time, four or five years ago, and they started slowly stumbling across our videos, bumping into them. All of a sudden, there's people watching my videos that I don't even know, and I remember looking at one of my videos once and thinking, wow, 34 views. I've only shown this to about 10 of my friends, 20 random people from the internet have watched this, and that, that's, that was such a cool concept to me, that that's what kicked it off, that's what kind of made me start wanting to increase it, and I thought, well, hey, you know, people starting to watch these videos, I should improve what they are, I should make them things people are going to look for. And then I started getting more people watching, I was like, right, how can I increase the quality? That was buying new capture devices, buying better microphones, getting better editing software, and just moving things on. And in all reality, it's just built up, it's grown from that point, that initial spark of, hey, people are watching my stuff, I should try and make it better onto where I am today. That's cool. Uh, I mean, it was an interesting concept you said at the start where some people say that they're obviously inspired by something to want to do that. I mean, that's definitely something that we found uh, and in so many of the fans we were talking to. A lot of them came to us and went, you know, you the side men, it was Vic Star, whoever, that made me mm -hmm. want to start my channel and made me want, I want to be like them, I want to do that. So uh, it's, quite a, it's quite an interesting concept. Do you, feel, do you feel sometimes that you do influence people to go and, and do what they want to do? Yeah, definitely. A huge kind of number of our viewers will go out and do the same thing as us and it's it's a great thing obviously to be able to spark that creativity you know you never know who's going to be in a few years time who's going to be one of the biggest kind of youtubers most successful but at the same time it can be a little worrying because you see a lot of people that will look at kind of the very top of youtube and look at people doing it as a full-time job and set their aim on that which is essentially quite you know a niche thing to be able to do and it requires i'm going to be honest a lot of luck and a lot of hard work to get to a point where you can sustain yourself just from making YouTube videos. And there's kind of a level of naivety among the younger viewers to the point where they think, you know, if I start doing this, it's going to work out. And they start to chase the numbers rather than enjoying what they're doing. 
and then that can create issues because they're just going to lose their motivation down the line and they'll have wasted this time that they put into something that it's not going to lead to anywhere because they're kind of aiming in the wrong areas, if that makes sense. Do you feel that really one of the, I know, although a lot of it's luck, one of the keys to success really is the fact that you're passionate about what you want to do, that that's, that's it, basically that's your number one priority is that you're doing something you really want to do rather than I'm doing it because I want to get this number of views on, get this amount of money. Or definitely, whatever. definitely that's the way to always look at it, just rather than kind of, it's, in fact, I've lost where I was, well, my train of thought, but yeah, I agree, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, so... As you, has the video content you create changed a lot over the, from the first videos you started uploading to the video, sort of videos you upload now? My content has definitely changed drastically over the past several years of doing YouTube. At the beginning, it was before even commentary. I just upload little clips of me playing the game to share with my friends. Then I realized I had these viewers that weren't you know, people I knew. And I thought I'd talk to them a little bit. So I kind of nervously sat in front of my mic recording my first commentary. And as it turns out, 14 years old at the time, didn't know what I was doing. I was literally just explaining what was happening on my screen, maybe with a little inkling here or there of what I liked in the game, what I didn't like. It was kind of very much Call of Duty based. That's where I started my channel, just Call of Duty clips, fun little video clips with friends. And it moved on to a point where I was kind of trying to give feedback, give tips. I was showing little tutorial spots, places where you could go and get kills on the game, you know, my favorite weapons to use, my favorite classes. I'd set myself little challenges in the game where I'd use quite a difficult setup in the game and try and challenge myself to win a game. And it moved on through that to the point where I was live commentating me playing Call of Duty. So I'd sit down and then as I was playing, I'd talk about what I was doing, where I was going to a, the next stage where I was producing edited videos. I was collaborating with editors to take my best moments, my best clips and edit them to music and special effects to create montages. And this all progressed further and further to the point where even further down the line, I was creating kind of informational videos, testing out theories in the game. And more recently, I took a move away from Call of Duty as an individual game because I would played it for years. I wasn't too interested in it as a game. And although my audience was entirely built up on it, I just said to myself, I can't carry on doing this because if I'm, if I'm not enjoying it, the audience will see that and it will all disintegrate. So I started playing other games like Minecraft and... Uh, uh, let's play in games. The let's play in games honestly didn't turn out too well. There wasn't kind of much um, attention to those, but I stuck with the Minecraft and that in, its, in itself really kind of picked up and a lot of people were watching the Minecraft videos. Then I started playing Grand Theft Auto with a few other friends who are YouTubers in the UK and we had so much fun doing that that an audience really picked up surrounding it. We created our own group and that's even developed what I do to a whole new level where it's become more personal. We'll do in real life challenges, video logs, and just playing games together. And people engage with us as a group called the Sidemen. We were all at Insomnia together. And that is kind of the latest stage is just collaborating and creating rather than informational content, creating entertaining content, which is where a shift is on YouTube right now um, to the kind of more mainstream. People just want to sit down and they want to laugh. They want to hear jokes. They want to see funny things. And that's where the current shift is in my eyes on YouTube. There is definitely room for every other style of content, but for me, it was easiest to fit into that you know, segment and it's the most fun for me. So basically you just try and fit in with the trends and see what the viewers want to watch and then create the sort of content that, you, that you know, is going to attract the most attention and that people are going to really want to, going to see. So you basically do tailor your content around to your audience. Definitely, yeah. It's finding the, the balance between what, you're, what I'm going to enjoy and what the audience is going to enjoy and just finding that middle ground and obviously it did change once it became a job to you know that point where I do tailor more to the audience than myself and just moving forward with that over time and seeing where things go. Have you ever done thing that you weren't sure about video content wise and then sort of find out oh, okay, I quite enjoy this but just because you thought the audience really wanted to see it so you were sort of like okay I'll do it but you weren't too sure about it. Is there anything new type of that? Yeah definitely and the most kind of key thing with that is just kind of becoming more integral in the videos the first time I went out and recorded a video log felt like the most awkward thing ever I'm walking around in you know on a train in a town holding a you know an iPhone camera towards me talking into it and that took a lot of confidence to do it was a very new thing but once I was into the flow of it and I saw the response on that video and people you know saying we want to see more in real life stuff we want to see you more out and about that became something that's more natural and uh, more normal that's the you know key example but any new form of content at first is going to cause some apprehension mm -hmm. but once you get into the flow of it it becomes very normal
at what point did you decide that uh, YouTube for you was something more substantial than just something you did for fun as a hobby? Something that you, you the, what the point we went? Okay, I need to take this a bit more seriously. Or I need to do. You know I mean, this needs to be, to be a bit more focused in my life. So there were key turning points along the journey that it suddenly became more and more significant to what I was doing. So obviously the first step was just having an audience suddenly made me, having an audience suddenly made me realise, hey, this is something that I can take a little more seriously. And at this point I was just having an audience for the sake of having an audience, thinking it was a cool thing to do, moving on with that. And then it got to a point where um, I realised you could monetize your YouTube videos. And I thought, hey, why not? I enjoy doing this. The audience enjoys watching it. Why not monetize it? So I went out to uh, a big company then called Machinima and you know, requested that you know, they monetize my channel for me. And then suddenly it's earning money. But again, at this point, it's still a hobby, really. I'm not setting out to make money from it. But as it goes on over the years, I'm still doing what I'm doing. And you know, the income starting to build up to a point where I'm like, hey, this is, you know, this is my part-time job. So it goes from hobby, went to a part-time job while I was uh, studying my GCSEs and my A levels, and I followed it through that time. And it was all I would want to do. You know, I was literally just getting my studying, my schoolwork done as quickly as possible to go and just make YouTube videos because I enjoyed it so much. And it got to the point where I was taking my A levels, and it was all I really wanted to do. And the earning was significant, so I thought hey, I'm still planning to go to university, so I you know, made sure I put my all into that, got my offer, then what I did is I deferred that offer for one year and said, hey, I'm gonna take a gap year, see how this goes, see what it's like to do it full time. And even at that point, it wasn't a long-term aim, it was just something I was gonna try out for a year, you know, build up some income, just experiment with. But then I ended up in this group with all the other guys in the UK where we collaborate on videos and that was a lot of fun. It pushed the audience further and it got to a point where we thought, hey, we're all you know, living, um, you know, we, we weren't all happy with where we were living. So we thought, why not move into a house together? It would make it easier to collaborate on videos, just a more fun experience. A lot of us have pretty messed up sleep schedules because we don't have set working hours. So it meant that we would just have a lot more fun. So February of this year, we moved into this house together and it's been so much fun and our audiences have grown so much that for me, I'm at the point now where it only makes sense for me, for me to continue doing YouTube until who knows when. It's, uh, it's a weird turning point to be at the point where I've decided I'm not actually, even though I could go to university, it's not something I'm going to pursue. Three, four years down the line, maybe that's something I'd go back to as an idea, but I'm at the point where the online space is growing so fast and there's so many opportunities within it. It's not simply me sat in front of a webcam or a computer playing video games anymore. It's going out to different events, meeting fans, being sponsored by companies, going out to developer studios in different countries, conventions, you know, working with different PR agencies. We work in the gaming industry rather than just on YouTube in this day and age. And that creates endless opportunities more than if I was to go and study a science degree at university than I would be given in my own uh, situation and it's something I engage in more and more passionate about so for the current time um, it's you know indefinitely what I'm going to be doing